This was a 44 year old female who came to us with very severe acute abdominal pain. Pain was very severe. Patient was actually sweating at the time of scanning. And uh, there was tenderness, but it was not so much as we expect in perforation. So the first thing that I thought that probably we're dealing with the case of perforation peritonitis. This patient was sent to us for sonography. The ultrasound was done. Ultrasound was not showing us anything. I mean, there were some dilated loops of gut with sluggish peristalsis. But again, nothing very specific. Minimal free fluid was seen. So our first impression was whenever we see some dilated loops of gut along with fluid in a very severe acute abdominal pain is perforation peritonitis. So this is what came to our mind. And uh, I called up the surgeon and said, probably we're dealing with a case of perforation. So let's do it. go ahead and do a CT. Surgeon said, yes, you can go ahead and do a CT for this patient. Now, he gave a very important history that this patient had a history of deep vein thrombosis in past. And that was not so far. She had the history of DVT just one year back. She was a young female, now complaining with severe abdominal pain. I don't know how to actually connect the dots or were these two things related or not. But when we did the CT of the patient, these two things apparently look connected. Now, this is the CT scene image. I want you to have a look at this image from top to bottom again. What do you see? I mean, this is something very easy to make out now. Because the physician told us that this patient had a history of DVT, we decided to do an angio rather than doing a plain CT of the abdomen. And can you make up the diagnosis? Even in the lung parenchyma, you see, there are peripheral based areas of, I don't know whether they're atelectasis or they are apparently pulmonary infarcts because we did not do a pulmonary angio in totality. But the main pulmonary arteries were looking quite normal. Then the problem started in the abdomen. You see, there are air foci in the liver as well. And these air foci are seen within the portal venous branches. Apart from air in the portal venous branches, what we are seeing, the liver is exceedingly fatty. Now, here itself, I would like to ask you how to differentiate it from pneumobilia. Pneumobilia is more central. If you find these air specks in the peripheral location, it's more likely to be a portal vein gas. P for peripheral, P for portal vein gas. And secondly, if a patient comes to you with air suspected in the biliary system, the patient will give a history of some intervention or you might see air in the GB fossa as well. So this patient had no such history. And in fact, uh, the entire CVD looked very clean. The entire GB looked very clean. So we had no confusion. We knew that we were dealing with a case of portal venous gas. Portal venous gas is something very, very troublesome. And it means that the patient is having some serious pathology in the vascular system. And the answer is right in front of us. What do you see? Look at the celiac artery. You can clearly, clearly see that there is an embolus which is lost in the celiac artery. Now, why I'm saying it's an embolus, it's not a thrombus, is because if you would have seen carefully, you can see a floating embolus in the aorta as well. Now, this was a young patient, relatively young patient, with a history of DVT in the past. And we can see a floating embolus, along with not only an embolus in the celiac trunk, but also an embolus in the SMA. I hope you are able to see this embolus in the SMA. This is the filling defect that we can see in the SMA. One more clue that we had was the kidneys. Look at the kidneys. Kidneys are showing cortical irregularity suggesting infarcts. We had multiple infarcts in the kidneys as well. So it means that whatever we're dealing with, it is having a multi-system involvement and there are various stages of disease that we can see. Renal scars are never acute. Yeah, renal scars mean that there is a chronic disease. And these renal infarcts that you can see here, this is the infarct, it means there is an acute pathology. We can also see thrombus or embolus, you should say, in the case of celiac artery, also you can see it in the SMA, means we have an acute disease. Now, I want you to have a look at the bowel here. What is happening to the bowel? This bowel is showing a very characteristic sign. If you see carefully, this bowel is showing air in the non-dependent part, which is expected. But if you see carefully, the air is also located along the dependent part. Air would never be seen on the dependent part. Air would rise to the non-dependent part. So if you see this type of air in the non-dependent wall of the bowel, as you can see in this case, all around air, this is a condition called as, I hope all of you know what it is, it is pneumatosis intestinalis. In a small bowel, if you find air within the wall, it is always pathological. In large bowel, it can be normal. In stomach also, it can be normal, but in small bowel, it is always pathological. And in this case, in which we can clearly see that there are signs of emboli in the SMA, you can see SMA is almost completely occluded here. And the celiac axis, we know that we're dealing with a case of mesenteric ischemia. Now, let us have a better look at the SMA, because right now we are interested in the bowel. And 
its branches, what is actually happening to its branches. So this is how the SMA begins. Now we can see it is almost completely occluded. At the origin, it is not occluded. It is wide open. This is another way to differentiate thrombus from embolus. All atherosclerotic processes which, got, which would cause thrombosis of the SMA will involve the ostea of SMA. While here the ostea is perfect, but there is thrombus which is starting from proximal part of the SMA and it is causing almost complete occlusion in the mid part. Here, we are not able to see any contrast within the superior mesenteric artery. If we go further down, now I want you to have a look at the branches of the SMA. Can you see the branches of the SMA? Normally, in cases of non-occlusive or non-thrombotic disease, the branches of SMA are also well opacified and they can be well seen on a CT angiography. But here, you see that there are no branches. Entire mesentery looks empty as if it has been devoid of the vessels. Typically, if you see, it's the jejunal mesentery which is not showing any significant vascularity. And if you see the bowel which is dilated is also the jejunal loop. And it's a long segment of jejunum that's dilated. If we go down, Let's look, the, let's look at the ileum. The ileum doesn't look abnormal. It is not dilated and we can see some normal enhancement in the wall of the ileum as well. Why? Because if you look at it carefully, there is a very important arterial arcade, if you see here, which is somehow getting its blood supply. And you can see even a small terminal branch of SMA here is also getting its blood supply normally. So there is some collateral circulation which is causing filling in of this particular artery, which is further extending superiorly and joining the SMA here. This prominent trunk is called as the ileocolic trunk or ileocolic artery, what you call it. So since the ileocolic artery is patent, the ileum is well perfused and it is not undergoing gangrene or pneumatosis. But this bowel is not showing any enhancement of the wall. It is showing pneumatosis intestinalis. So it's a case of bowel gangrene. Bowel gangrene. Now this is something which is very, very dreadful and feared disease not only for the doctor but also for the patient. Why? Why for the patient? Because again it's having a very poor prognosis. Why for the doctor? Because you know look at the bowel, the segment of bowel which is involved. It's a long segment of bowel which is involved. And on CT we cannot be very very sure about the entire length of bowel that is affected. So when the surgeon goes on inside he can get a very long segment of bowel which is gangrenous and a, a different different segment of bowel which is pre-gangrenous. So he himself doesn't know how much of bubble will he have to reject. And in cases of jejunum, if he rejects a large part of the jejunum, as if as you can see in this particular case, let me clear this mess for you to have a better look at the bowel involved. So here what we're seeing is a, lo a long segment, a very long segment. It is definitely more than 20 to 30 centimeters of jejunum, which is not looking perfused. It looks like gangrenous. So when the surgeon is going to get in, he is going to dissect a large part of the bowel, and this type of a patient will have Symptoms of malabsorption in the later part of the life. You can also develop features of small gut syndrome or small bubble syndrome. So this is in short a brief discussion about mesenteric ischemia.